How's the meal, everybody? Okay, we're going to start with some speeches while everyone's still eating, but we're just going to keep them rolling along. So, first of all, I'd like to uh, call uh, Arthur and Peggy McLean up, Allison's parents. Don't stand on the child. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify a couple of points. Uh, I get asked this question very often. Um, this is Allison's mother. It's not my second wife. Uh, she is not 25 years younger than I am. Her and I have been together since high school, so just to clarify that. Because anytime we go out anywhere in public, people say, well, she's quite a bit younger than you. She must be like, you know, Allison must be like from the first marriage. I said, no. She just looks younger. Um, Good genes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to... Um, Start off by saying thank you very much from the members of the Miramichi Police Force for the honor guard today. Thank you very much. Uh, there's actually three members from that were there today worked all night. They worked night shifts, and they come in uh, sleeping very little to come in to do this today. And I really appreciate that. Um, I'll have to welcome Nick to the family. You don't have to. So somebody. Right. So if someone said, you know, like, what exactly are you going to say? I said, where's your speech? I said, the problem with speeches, you write the speech down, you're going to be able to read them. In order to read them, I have to throw it on the floor without glasses on. So I'm just going to go off the cuff. Some people make them nervous, but I think it's the best way to do it. Um, basically, as police officers, uh, we assess situations quickly. We judge people quickly and go into situation and calls. Uh, when I first met Nick, uh, I had... Uh, my initial impression. I attended Montreal for two nights uh, at a batch, uh, the stag party, and some people tried to see if I could keep up with them, but four o'clock in the morning I was still there. Uh, he's been with us, they've been in New Brunswick now for what, a year and a half? Almost two years. Almost, well, time flies. And my initial impression in spending two days in Montreal and the two years with them it hasn't changed one bit. Um, every every father every father wants to have a son-in-law to look after his daughter that he would pick, and I couldn't do a better job. Um, <laughs> over the over the last like Peggy and I said, like Peggy said, is he for real? Like really? Like the way. He, he, he treats her like it's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, he has all kinds of patience. He's a great guy. Uh, the the Mary Machine is a much slower pace than Milton. I went to, when I went to move them home, I could think, wow, what a difference. It's, 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 it's a different pace. Um, he's, he's a great guy and uh, truly welcome to the family. Mooch, uh, he, he did a great job. Great job. And for those, for those people that's the first time in Eastern Canada, welcome, welcome to Miramichi. Um, you can come back and visit any time. Farmer's a great bartender. <laughs> I had to stay away from the bar last night because I said there's no way I'm going to be able to get up today. Because The worst mistake when Peggy and I went to bed last night, he said we're going to take the phone and we're going to leave it in the kitchen. Worst, we forgot and left the phone in the bedroom and the texts keep coming. Some, cause some people didn't sleep last night and the phone kept going off all night, all night, all night. Because somebody remembered, oh, what about this? And I'll text Dad to, to remind her, Mom to remind him. But every hour, the phone kept going off and off. So we didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Um, neither did the bride. Neither did the bride. I was just going to expand on what, uh, what Arthur was saying with Nick. And um, we didn't have the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Nick because Allison was living in St. John at the time, and we lived in Miramichi. But every time we would visit, Nick was so kind. It, three hours away, for those who do not know, it's about a three hour drive, which probably is only just a commute to work for you in <laughs> Toronto. But it's a trip for us here. We actually pack and close and we go for a couple of days. So <laughs> anytime I would visit, um, I spent a little bit of time with Nick. And I will say, to be brutally honest, the first time I met him, it was in an Italian restaurant. And I, uh, I watched very carefully because Allison was telling us this wonderful Italian boy she met, and we're sitting having dinner. He ordered the chicken parm, in case anybody was wondering. 
he ordered the chicken parm, so I'm sitting there and watching, and you know, they bring all the utensils and whatnot. He eats his meal and everything, and everybody's all niceties, whatever, and have a chat with Allison afterwards, and I said, yeah, I don't think he's really Italian. And she said, what do you mean? I said, he didn't use the spoon. So I don't think he's really Italian. So I thought maybe, got a little skeptical, maybe he's not really authentic. And any time I spent with him, I believe, I, I taught you how to twirl now, so I think we're good. Now he's, now I feel he's really Italian. <laughs> um, but any time we spent time with him, he was so kind to Allison, so authentically kind, and I thought, mm, I don't know, that can't be real. They were doing the long distance thing, and I thought, okay, when they start living together, that'll change. So they started living together, she moved to Ontario, and I said to Arthur, well, I'm gonna go up to Ontario, because I had to go for work, and I thought, I'm gonna go a few days early, I'm gonna spend some time with them. We'll see if this is real. So I went up, I spent a couple of days, and I called Arthur, I said, mm-hmm. Well, he's as kind to her, and uses terms of endearment, speaks only to her in terms of endearment, in front of us, and while I'm here visiting. But I'm only here for a couple of days, so he can keep that up for a couple of days. <laughs> then we went to supper at Lucha's house, and Katie was there. And we sat and we had supper, and he spoke to her and treated her the same way in front of his dad and his sister, as he did when he was in St. John and as he did when I was there. So I called Arthur and I said, well, you know what, I think, I think he's real. I'm gonna check the backyard for a unicorn, but I think he's real. So Nick, I honestly adore you. I could not have handpicked anybody better to be with my daughter and hopefully be the father to my grandchildren. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. But the, the of the but I find it quite entertaining that how they met. Everybody heard the story, but I was the last one to hear the story. Oh. The last one to hear the story. Yeah, and, I, and I sort of got a call. I, I, I think that's a big story. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying the story. I'm just saying. I didn't get the full story. It took me about three years, to, uh, two years to get the full story. In Montreal, what? after a couple drinks, I heard. A couple? Mm, a couple? couple quite a few. I was a sober one. I was a chaperone. No. But I heard more come out about the actual the introduction and how they met. It's quite an interesting story. I believe there's only one person that can do an effective job of that, telling the real story. And I'm not going to say anything more about it. But anyway, for those people outside the area, thank you very much for coming the long distance and come back to the Mary Machine anytime. Uh, hopefully, you stay longer, go for a nice tour of the river. It's a great spot, nice and relaxing, but you got to come back. <laughs> okay, that was great. Now, Luch, see if you can match that one. I'd like to welcome Nick's father, Luch Mezzarotti. Very much, Colin. As most of you can see, I'm a little bit nervous, so you might have to bear with me here and there. <laughs> That's a good start, Mike. <laughs> uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not much of a speaker, and I'll try to keep this short and sweet. As most of you know, I am Nicholas's father, and I'm very proud of him today. I just want to start my speech off tonight by asking everyone to stand up and help me toast a happy couple. Cheers to you both. I love you. Nicholas, you have yourself a most beautiful bride. I can honestly say to Allison that Nicholas loves you very much or he wouldn't have made a life for himself here in New Brunswick. I'd like to mention to you all in attendance today that your province is wonderful and a great place to hold their wedding. I'd like to thank Peggy and Arthur for all their warm hospitality and welcoming myself, my family, and my friends. It's been tremendous, awesome. I just have no words to describe it. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to welcome Allison into the Maserato family. Welcome. Yeah. 
I'm sure you'll find us all kind and big hearted. Uh, it's been great meeting your family and friends this weekend. For all of my family and friends that have made the trip to celebrate this joyous day, I am so grateful to you all. I know some sacrifices were made and I appreciate it. To Nick's best man, Nick Vipon, ushers Tyler Grace, Aaron McLean, ring bearer Colton Chandler, and greeters Don Kitchen and Aaron Fair, thank yous to all of yous for standing along my son today. You guys did a marvelous job. Thanks to my brother and sister-in-law, Serge and Lucy, my sister Lena, my brother-in-law Roman, sister Maria, my recently married father-in-law Francis, and known as the farmer, <laughs> and his beautiful bride Darlene, sister-in-law Bonnie, niece Jennifer, nephew Trevor and Katie, Matthew and Taryn, friends Brad and Kim, their, uh, my daughter Caitlin, and fiance Grayson, who had made the trip down here today to help celebrate this special day. I'd also like to mention a special thank you to my sister-in-law, Bonnie, for all the tremendous work she has done on the blankets. Thank you very much, Bonnie. A, a special thank you also to my uh, sister-in-law, Lucy, for standing alongside my son, Nicholas, and um, having me the uh, mother and son dance. Thank you very much, Lucy. To the maid of honor and all the bridesmaids and the flower girl, all I can say is, wow, all so beautiful today. You guys just are gorgeous. <laughs> now I'd like to uh, fill in the McLean family about Nick's escapades growing up <laughs> and some of the stunts he has come across since he was born into this world of ours. Are you ready, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing bad, it's nothing bad, it's nothing bad. Um, one summer night, Nick and his buddies got caught uh, ripping down a traffic sign when they probably uh, had one too many beverages. As usual, Nick told me he was innocent and wasn't involved in the incident and that he was just watching, as usual. As it turned out, they all paid uh, for the traffic damage and I'm sure all learned a valuable lesson. Right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you guys will be well behaved tonight because I uh, do have uh, I do have uh, a policeman in the house tonight. Um, they were also at the church, if you saw. So I'm sure you guys will behave tonight. Um, uh, like the uh, baseball code of not wearing a protective helmet and cage and taking a hardball right below the eye. Wow, that was scary. Looks like he went 12 rounds with Mike Tyson after that episode. <laughs> I remember one year trying to teach him to ice skate on a Saturday afternoon. I can still remember him skating well, but unfortunately not being able to stop. <laughs> Bang, into the boards he goes. That was his way of stopping. It was, it was hilarious. I can, I can recall another weekend of skating, taking him and my daughter, Caitlin, there. They were so very young back then. Doing Nicholas's skates up, first told him to go on the ice while I tied my skates and my daughter's skates up. Well, that's, that skate didn't last long because as soon as we hit the ice, there goes Nick down on the ice, face first. Uh, you suffered a... Oh, mixed up pages here. He uh, suffered a deep cut to his chin. Off to the hospital where he, we go, where I think he received five or six stitches. I'm pretty damn sure that was the last time on skates for him. Nick is so laid back that not much really bothers him. I, regret, I can recall uh, buying him a nice wristwatch for Christmas one year. Well, that watch didn't last long on his wrist because he went on holidays uh, with his buddies. Uh, when, <laughs> when, they, when they decided that jumping into the waters from cliffs would be pretty cool. Not thinking about the watch on his wrist, there goes Nick into the water. I think everybody knows where that watch is now. Yep, somewhere in the waters of Porta Plata. Right, Nick? Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can recall another episode when Nick was holding onto my car door handle and, take him, and, and me taking off. That didn't work out so well for him either, as he couldn't keep up and fell and scraped his knees, elbows, and chipped his teeth. When you got into 30, I can't keep up. <laughs> but, you know, as all of you can see, he's one handsome guy. I coached Nick in baseball, and that was his passion. Still is to this day. He loves the game so much that he wanted to be a major leaguer, but it didn't turn out that way. But the love for the game never wavered, and I'm sure the love we see today between Nick and Allison will never waver. Uh, when Nick finished high school, he took some time off to decide what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. <laughs> I never thought he'd ever want to leave that bedroom and visit video games. <laughs> One day, there I was, cooking supper, when he told me he wanted to go to trade school and become an electrician. I was shocked. I couldn't believe he could do that, and you proved me wrong. I am so very proud of you that you are a hard-working, fine, licensed electrician today. Well done, son. He will help everyone he can and has a big heart. I know he will be a wonderful husband, to you, Allison, and a great son-in-law to Arthur and Peggy. Just wanted to say that all not, not all family members could be here today to celebrate this happy occasion, and they all wish you every happiness and well-being in the future. Before we start the party, I have one more thing I would like to say to my son today. I know today is the biggest day of your life. And I know that your mother is looking down from heaven with that big, beautiful smile of hers, beaming from ear to ear on the choice you have made in your life and the wife you have chosen. I'm sure your mother and grandmother have already started celebrating, so I think it's our time to start celebrating ourselves. All the best, son. I love you with all my heart. Thank you. Okay, I'll follow that one up with love is a father's son. Okay, so next up is Miss Erica McLean. I got three feet. Settle down at table number three. start off by welcoming everybody here, especially those who traveled far, and I would like to thank everybody who came. And as you can see, I take after my father. There is no paper in my hand. Because um, you can't read either? <laughs> I told you never to bring that up! Um, um, I am the maid of honor, and for those of you who don't know, Allison's sister, and me and Allison, there is a 10-year age difference. So growing up, um, Allison kind of became a sister and a mother in a way. So when I think of Allison growing up, I remember her um, getting between me and Aaron. Um, that was quite a task in itself. <laughs> And she got a job at the theater when she was in high school, and she would always take me to the movies. And when you're a little kid, when you go to the movies, that is, that is a big deal, and I appreciate that. Um, but we did have our sibling rivalry, and one of my favorites is um, just a couple years ago at Christmas. <laughs> so when, um, when we were kids, Allison always tickled me, and she never knew when to stop, even though I would scream and I would cry. She would always keep tickling me because it was hilarious, right? I am now a teenager, and it is Christmas uh, Day, and we had just finished supper, and I was on my way to the bathroom. And she decided to 
uh, bring back an old tradition and tickle me. And it was, and I'm very ticklish. I am <laughs> ridiculously ticklish. So <laughs> she tickles me until I am on the floor. And I am on the floor and it's not pretty. I'm crying. <laughs> Um, I'm crying, I'm kicking, and I'm, I'm on my way to the bathroom, so this is not a good idea. And I told her, I'm like, and I told her, I'm gonna pee myself. You need to stop, I will pee myself. This is not gonna end well, I'm gonna pee myself. She's like, ah ha ha, no, 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 keep stopping me. I'm like, I'm gonna pee myself. And, and tears, and there's kicking, and there's rolling. It's not pretty, it's not a pretty sight. Um, and I told her, you need to stop, you need to stop. She didn't stop, and I went to kick in defense, and I ended up just getting her right in the throat. <laughs> right in the throat, and she took it like a champ, she really did. <laughs> she, she got really red in the face though, and she kind of choked a little bit, but after that, she was good, she was good. She can, she can take a hit. <laughs> so we, you know, that's kind of how our family rolls, you know, I get, I get a little kick, and I kind of ruined Christmas, but. <laughs> It happens, and, um... So everybody get what? <laughs> I can, you know, I can reenact it if you want, but I don't know. <laughs> and I now have a new brother-in-law, so I'd like to welcome you to the family, Nick. And Allison and Nick, I'm, like, everybody knows that honeymoon phase where you're like, oh, no, baby, I love you more, no, I love you more. And I noticed that this stage kind of went on for like a, a lot longer than usual with Allison and Nick. And honestly, I don't think they ever got out of it. <laughs> they're, they're still pretty, um, no, I love you more, no, I love you more. Oh, stop, no, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. Yeah, that's, that's Allison and Nick. And I hope that it never ends. I hope that you always are in that honeymoon phase of, because I've never really seen that before that it just, I, and I was waiting for it and I, I, I kind of put him like, I wonder when it's gonna, and then there was some times while planning the wedding where I was like, maybe this is it, this could be it. I think this is the time. But I, I, I think they're still going pretty strong. And I hope that you continue to go strong and I hope only the best for you guys. Well, that was quite the performance. <laughs> okay, so next up, I'd like to invite the best man, Nick Vipon. <laughs> Sorry, I just got to pull up the old speech here on the old iPhone. <laughs> Don't anybody look at my pants, they're a little short. <laughs> Sensitive subject with Allison, but. <laughs> yeah, one in Rome. So uh, without any uh, prompting needed first and uh, most important duties of the best man, I think, is to uh, compliment the bride. And uh, not much prompting needed here. Allison, you look beautiful today. You're stunning and uh, as a lucky man. I'd also like to say the bridesmaids, you're second only to Allison, so, you know, good on you. And as I look over, as I look over at Maz, this is probably the first and only time he'll uh, allow me to compliment his wife and sister at the same time without getting a shot in the arm, so, <laughs> thanks buddy. There you go. I'd also like to stay, uh, extend a big thanks to, uh, on behalf of all the Ontarians, Ontarians in the crowd, I know where you guys are in the back there, and uh, Maz's family. I'd like to extend a big thank you for uh, Art and his family and uh, all the locals around here for all the hospitality you guys have shared with us and it's been a, it's been a great, great trip. <laughs> now, uh, Art was mentioning something about the, uh, this true story of uh, Allison and Nick and he said there's only one person that knows the story better and I guess it's time to bring up Tyler Grace. <laughs> No, no, he, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to him. I would, Allison would be losing it if I brought him up here. <laughs> but while I'm on the uh, subject of thanks, I'd like to uh, just give a thanks to myself and Tyler Grace for introducing these two. Yeah. While, we're on the subject of, while we're on the subject of how they met. So, you know, hey, 
We go back a long time, four years ago, 2010. Tyler, myself, and Nick are in my basement planning a Dominican getaway for a guy's trip, just the three of us, three best friends going on a trip. Four years later, here we are. <laughs> Greatest guy's trip ever, eh? <laughs> There's uh, a guy I've spent many weekends with on the ball field, many a night singing karaoke at the bar, countless times arguing baseball strategy and lineups with, countless times uh, just, you know, being drunk and stupid, really. <laughs> I can't say I know a better guy, Maz. No matter how many times I have to drag your butt home drunk, forget you in a pizza pizza, <laughs> pick you up after you hit into a double play, I just have to say, my liver can't take another Dominican trip, so you better make this marriage work. <laughs> A few of us here thought uh, you guys had both lost your minds at first, flying back and forth, taking time off work. But uh, after a few months, maybe even a year, we realized how serious it was and you know, you had lived back in Ontario and we thought it was for real. And Allison, I have to say, getting to know you over the last few years has been a, a real privilege. And uh, I must say, there's a few things you have to know. Um, a, thank you for taking him off our hands. Like, <laughs> it's been a long time coming, finding a woman for him. And uh, secondly, you should know how lucky you are. Whether you're down on your luck or you just need a beer or you're looking for a good laugh, uh, Maz, you're a guy that uh, anybody can count on. You're one of the most loyal, selfless, caring people I've ever met in my life. And uh, you're a pretty good baseball player too. <laughs> and uh, I honestly can't say any good enough, uh, enough good things about you, your family, and uh, Luch, I love you too. Like, you're the greatest guy. And it's been an honor to stand up here with you today. And uh, I truthfully wish the two of you nothing but happiness. And I look forward to many, many more memories together. So everybody just uh, raise a glass for uh, Allison and Nick. Okay, so it comes down to the last two, I guess. So I'm going to let you stay, stay right where you are, and I'm going to bring the microphone to you. Allison and Nick. So I also have uh, my speech on my iPhone. So. <laughs> um, firstly, on behalf of my uh, new wife and I, um, we'd like to thank everybody here for uh, sharing in our big day joining all their celebrations and everything. Um, it's fantastic to see you all here, having a good time, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, it definitely wouldn't be the same without any of you, so. Um, Alice and I would like to thank uh, both our parents for their uh, time, generosity, and uh, support through all of this and making this day happen. Um, we, really, we really couldn't have done with out any of you. Sorry. <laughs> um, Kevin Arthur, um, you guys have raised such a wonderful, beautiful, smart, I, there's no words to describe Allison right now. It's, uh, <laughs> um, you guys did a tremendous job raising her and I'm sure she's, uh, she would agree that you guys have been great role mo models for her growing up, and she wouldn't be the kind, generous, and loving woman she is today without you, either of you. Um, uh, to my Aunt Bonnie, she's made numerous, I can't even count how many quilts she's made us. Um, whether it's the, the one you guys all signed out, out front, or the one she's been trying to sell for us for to raise money for our wedding day. She's just been outstanding and all that stuff. And I can't, I can't after that. I can't thank you enough. Um, 
to the few people who can't be here, my mother, um, my grandmother, I know they're up looking looking down at us right now, and she, my, I know my mom wouldn't uh, wouldn't have picked a better bride for me. She uh, she would have loved you, Allison, and I know that for sure. Um, Dad, thank you so much. I know it's uh, no, it wasn't easy raising a couple teenagers after my mom passed, but. Uh, did a hell of a job. Um, you did your best, and really, personally, I think I turned out pretty awesome, so you must have done something right. <laughs> to uh, Allison's bridesmaids, you all look gorgeous today, and uh, I know she, she really couldn't have done all, any of this without you guys, so thank you. Um, she, I'm, I'm sure she appreciates all your help and support and everything. Uh, to the best man, the groomsmen, you know, uh, the ushers, I appreciate you guys accepting the big part you guys played in our uh, our old our ceremony or day today. And I know it wasn't easy for most of you guys to travel out here, and I appreciate that as well. Now to Allison, my lovely bride. <laughs> Thank you for all your efforts of making uh, this big day happen. It's if you, I really didn't do much, uh, so. <laughs> uh, your cre creativity, organization, and hard work has resulted in a great, huge success. A wonderful day, wonderful day for both of us. Um, I'd also like to say thank you for agreeing to spend your rest of your life with me. I know. It's, some days it could be difficult, but um, I feel completely honored to have married someone so beautiful, funny, and intelligent. Now, now I know she'll tell you that uh, I'm a big joker and I like to play games and all this other stuff. So we went on uh, we went on a cruise last year, and. Um, we were in her cabin, and I got on one knee, and I was going to propose and everything, and she thought for sure it was a big joke, right? <laughs> she, uh, in fact, she actually started looking around for Ashton Kutcher and all the TV cameras. She, she actually thought she was on punk for a second in the TV show. I don't know if any of you saw it, so. But, uh, yeah, she, she denies any of that. She denies all that today. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. <laughs> The best man, Nick. I'd uh, like to thank uh, like to thank you for accepting the role today. I know it was a big uh, big deal traveling out here, and can't uh, can't thank you enough. So if we don't hang out enough uh, as much as we used to, but uh, uh, <laughs> we don't hang out as much as we used to. Um, but I can't help but think of all those great memories, whether it's going to Dominican or New York or uh, getting in trouble at ball tournaments. and Not, not even always our, our fault, right? We were sleeping half the time, right? Never our fault. We had, a, we had no, uh, no plan in that uh, rest either. It wasn't us. <laughs> Anyways, um, did you want to? To carry on the McLean tradition, I'm going to wing it. Let's do this. <laughs> I actually made some notes in the hotel and then forgot all of them. So, I would like to start with, so Nick did say thank you to our parents, but I'd like to say a personal thank you to my parents. My dad has been spending weeks and weeks preparing and doing all this stuff, and a lot of it kind of blew up in his face, literally. He actually bought a limo for the wedding today, and it, the engine literally blew up last week. So, <laughs> I want to thank my dad for all his efforts. For those of you who came by our house last night, the um, garage was put together in less than two weeks. He made it happen. My mother... <laughs> my mother... <laughs> my mother has been putting up with me for a little while now. This last week has been a marathon. We actually started joking that... Uh, 
when we get into a car together, we're like an old married lesbian couple because we fight and argue, and it's just one of those scenes where we're like an old married couple. It, it, <laughs> and we call each other names, and we... Nice names, of course, of course. <laughs> but I want to thank them for all their help and support because obviously we would have gotten through today without them. And to Luch and to Katie and to all your family, thank you so much. You've always made me feel like I was always a part of the family from the get-go. I know you're probably skeptical when I first kind of showed up at your door. I kind of been dating like, Nick for a couple months. So like, who is this and what happened and why is his fling following him back here? But it all turned out well. <laughs> <thought> that. <laughs> I knew you guys did, but I thought his family might be a little skeptical at first, too. But for those of you who don't know, I am normally a really shy person. And when I first met Nick, I'm like, I kind of like this guy. Like, I get butterflies and things. He's really nice to me, and I don't know. I kind of like him. And we were having dinner my last night in Dominican, and I left before him. And my friend Nikki rushes in, the bus had come early. So she ushers me out, I grab all my stuff, and I leave, and I'm on the bus thinking, I'd leave a number, we'd exchange numbers, I have no idea how to rule this guy. He seems really nice, what do I do? So I get home back from New Brunswick, I live in St. John at the time, and I start internet stalking him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find a whole lot, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call the resort. Because we both have a gold package, and I know they have a clubhouse for that. <laughs> so I call the clubhouse, and I'm like, hey, there's Nick Maserato there. I'm going to leave my number for him, my name and number. And uh, can you just like, slide that into the door, and we'll see what happens. We'll you know, see what happens. I actually just found out about two or three months ago, these guys found the number first. <laughs> and we're debating on whether to pass it on or not. <laughs> They obviously did because I got a text at 2 o'clock a Sunday morning New with time. New Brunswick time, which is also Dominican time, I found out, saying, I thought it was really sweet that you have my name at the resort and blah, blah, blah. And then from then on, we took off. We texted like every day. And I joke how our relationship is based on Nick getting drunk because he wouldn't talk to me in Dominican unless he had a few beers in him. <laughs> and then the whole reason he came to New Brunswick in the first place was we played, my cousin Angela and I had played an April Fool's joke on him. I said, hey, I bought you a plane ticket to come visit me in New Brunswick. You want to show up? He's like, are you serious? I'm like, well, yeah. He's like, no, really. I'm like, no, no, I'm just joking. He thought, it, he, I had to convince him I was really joking. I was like, oh yeah, oh, yeah I booked you a flight for April 16th, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I did explain it was a joke. So April 15th rolls along. I'm like, hey, you want to use that ticket? And he's like, you book it, I'll come. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> so he's like, yeah, no, do it. So I am on the phone till five o'clock in the morning with Air Canada, booking his flight. And I said, I tell him, like, if I book this flight, you better show up because it's on my credit card and I am not having any of this. <laughs> For those of you who know me, I'm not having any of this. <laughs> he shows up. I go to the airport in St. John, he shows up. I come to find out that night, he was having drinks with this guy in a bar. Blue game, after Jay's game. Shocking. And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where it all took off. And here we are. Four years later. Four years later. Thank you very much to the Maseratos and the Baverstock side of the family. You guys have always made me feel like I've just been a part of the family since the beginning. And thank you, my family, for welcoming Nick. Because I know bringing someone new in the family, you're always kind of skeptical, right? Especially when they're an outsider from Ontario. <laughs> and they're Italian, they're Italian, they don't use a spoon. <laughs> so, um, so... Thank you, family and friends. And I also just want to take a little second here to thank some of our service providers because without today, obviously, things would not be the same. So I want to thank some of my family who kind of went a little above and beyond. My grandparents, my Aunt Teresa Uncle Colin, for all of you guys have done. For those of you who are out of town and got those out of town 
bags in your room, they put all those together. I just made the labels. So they went above and beyond, helped out with that. <laughs> to the bridal party, thank you guys all so much for standing up here. We have, I think, four different provinces represented between all of this table up here. So we have Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Ontario, all represented up here. For everyone who's come out today to be up here with us. Thank you guys so much. I couldn't do without my girls because you guys have kept me sane for most of this. <laughs> try to, try to. I kind of fought them on some of it. And for the guys, thanks for coming, supporting Nick. I heard things a little hairy this morning, but we're all good now. <laughs> for the service providers, we have Sugar and Spice who did our decor and who also did the, some help me with my organization today. I was a little kind of out of my mind there for a little while, so Paula helped me out with that, keep things straight. Um, for Drew, our DJ, wherever he is. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing our DJing tonight. And he's going to play some songs for us tonight. So he is taking requests as well for those of you who are staying behind. For uh, Bass Trash Photography for coming in. And those of you who don't know, there will be a photo booth not too far from the candy bar. Or no, candy bar is on the hall. Not too far from where the cocktail hour food was. It's going to be out in the hall. We couldn't fit in the room. So please, when dinner is over, can you please make sure you guys come out to the photo booth? I would love to see pictures of everyone. I want to see some funny, some great pictures of everyone. Have a couple glasses of wine. Be fun. Have a good time. T and Jeff are going to take care of you guys. Um, to Hoyt Video Productions, they have been videoing our day so far, and they have actually been here since yesterday. So if those of you who would like to say anything for us, any comments, questions, you want to say something, he's doing a documentary film. So you can meet up with Josh, and he has an assistant here as well. So you guys, those who want to say any words, just kind of find him. He also has a really wicked cool drone that flies. That's coming out the dance, apparently. So I can't wait for that. Um, of course, to the catering today, Marion and Tommy Fitzpatrick for all of the wonderful meal that you guys have enjoyed so far. And dessert is to come, so be prepared. There are some homemade pies. We went with pies because we did cupcakes for our cakes, so we have a little bit of the best of both worlds. And of course, to our wonderful Australian MC, imported from Australia, Colin Hunt. <laughs> He's done a wonderful job. And for those of you who don't know, in our family, everyone's assigned someone they have to love. <laughs> Colin has to love me. I have been mixing his drinks since before I should have been. <laughs> he has a nice little shot glass that has some really weird measurements on it. So yeah, I just kind of winged it. 15, 14, whatever, you know. He has to love you. He, ha he has to love me. So no matter what I do, he has to love me, right? So I also want to acknowledge, I know we had talked about some of the people, like Ontario, you guys have definitely made a wonder, like a journey and it's amazing. I was surprised how you came from Ontario, but we actually do have people here from Alberta all the way to Newfoundland. So we have most of Canada covered and I'd love to go through everyone, but there's so many people who have traveled to be here with us today. I want to make sure that you guys, we really appreciate you guys coming and we are so appreciative that you guys could be here with us today. And uh, I think, that's it for me. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. If uh, you guys all don't mind, just raise a glass and uh, say cheers to this beautiful day.